day of the epiphany for today. Welcome to you all. There is a very important announcement in the <coughs> insert in the bulletins today. It's really, really important. And Father will talk about it more at the end of the Mass. Please make sure as you leave the church today and you grab the bulletin so you can read and pray for the respond to this urgent cry for help. Time to silence your cell phones, please. We have a custom in our parish. At the end of the Mass, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called home by God. In the Mass today, we commemorate three wise magi who travelled from a far land following a star. They brought gifts for the King. What gifts have you brought with you for the King today? Take time now to consider this question as you prepare your heart to celebrate this most holy Eucharist. Thank you.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, we take a moment to acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these Epiphany mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears. 
pierce his glory. <coughs> Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and <coughs> overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 60, Every Nation on Earth.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. The Word of the Lord. said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, In you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, 
They departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear in, in Paul's letter this morning that he's convinced that Christ has been sent not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. Today is the feast day of the Epiphany, the church tells us, and according to Merriam-Webster's, the word Epiphany, when it's capitalized like the church uses it, is a church festival, a commemoration of the arrival of the Magi as the very first manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. The word when it's not capitalized means, well get this, a sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something. It can also be an intuitive grasp of something or a sudden illumination or discovery or a realization. So, have you had epiphanies? I get them occasionally. Usually, it's immediately preceded by a smack in the head from my wife. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> um, not, not really. Um, that's a lot. It's just not too violent. <laughs> But Epiphany certainly applies to the arrival of the Magi. So I'm going to ask you to use your imagination for a moment, okay? Imagine, if you will, what it must have been like for Mary and Joseph at this time of their life. How fantastic and awesome and scary it must have been for them. Each of them, Mary and Joseph both, had been visited by an angel who had told them an unbelievable story of Mary bearing a child, a son, the angel said, and how could that be known before it was born? And then with this son, they would name Jesus. And not only that, they were told that he would be a great ruler over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there would be no end. And if these dreams weren't awesome and scary enough, these things and more actually came to pass for them. And so now here we have Mary and Joseph, far from home in the city of Bethlehem, with the foretold son, when suddenly there are magi or astrologers or kings, if you will, from a foreign land who enter your house and upon seeing Mary and Jesus, they prostrate themselves. And if that were not amazingly enough, they start opening chests and handing out gold and frankincense and myrrh. What an epiphany it must have been to realize that not only had the dreams and the conversations with the angels been true, that the angels' prophecy would indeed come to pass, but how incredible that representatives from what might have been the second most powerful empire in the known world would travel to Jerusalem, to Bethlehem for a small visit. Now, do you suppose Mary and Joseph have a sudden illuminating discovery or realization, an epiphany, that their son would have influence far away from Israel, even to Gentile When I was studying for the diaconate and immersed in the scripture studies, 
the uh, instructors helped us to understand that in order to get in touch with scripture a little bit, you quite often have to look beyond the surface and beyond maybe the theological context that we normally get because other things influenced the writers of scripture. If you can imagine there were economic and social and historical and political contexts that come into play. And if we understand those or look at them, it can help us understand what was being written and why. So if you don't mind, let's take a little side trip into ancient history and see what might have been going on in the mind of Herod and in Matthew as he wrote this story and why this visitation of the Magi is so important. Now, the account of the Magi story in Matthew would make a great movie script, wouldn't it? And actually it has. It has all the features that you need. It has exotic guests, and it has phenomenon in the sky, and it has expensive gifts, complicated journeys, an evil king, prophetic dreams. It's also a surprisingly accurate fulfillment of the Isaiah prophecy in what we heard in Psalm 72. It is so close, in fact, and it's also a great illustration of Matthew's belief that the Gentiles were included in Christ's salvation. That some scholars, some scholars, believe that maybe Matthew made up this story. Now, before you get outraged at that, please remember that from the earliest times, the church has always indicated that the Gospel of Matthew, along with the other Gospels we have, was truly inspired by God. So even if Matthew made it up, God wanted to be here. Okay? There is no other evidence any place in Scripture of the Magi visits. Although, that's not uncommon for biblical stories. But this style of stories represents and reflects writings of historical importance of the time. The writings often included miracles and parables, and while they may not have been based on actual fact, they illustrate supernatural characteristics of the individual. So the visit of the Magi fits this kind of narrative, and the sudden appearance of a star and exotic messengers also reveal that the child Jesus is indeed the Messiah. So looking at this through a historical perspective shows a complex story. Now here's what Matthew knew that we may not know as you study ancient scripture and ancient history. The word that Matthew uses that we translate as magi usually describes educated courtiers of the Parthian Empire. That empire lay just to the east of Judea. Matthew also knew that Herod had no trust of the people of this empire. You see, they had actually invaded Judea and the Eastern Roman Empire some 40 years before. Now, they'd been pushed back but Herod himself had used the chaos of that war to put himself into power. They also saw that Judea was a prize, okay, and were still looking to that. He was not real confident that these powerful and hungry neighbors were looking at him as a Roman puppet. So think about these facts as the Magi from the East the empire nobody trusted, arrives in Jerusalem and start asking about a new king. Matthew tells us that Herod was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. I think that's a little understatement. He was probably beside himself in fear and in anger. And knowing these things, may help bring a little bit more understanding to us of the importance of this story and the behavior that Herod shows a little bit later in Scripture 
and why the Magi exit using a different route. And if you remember later in scripture, the Holy Family flees to Egypt and Herod massacres the children of Bethlehem. The church calls this celebration Epiphany as a commemoration of the manifestation of Christ to Gentiles. That would be to us. But how many epiphanies, small e epiphanies, are in this story? Well, let's see. Educated men of a powerful country see a star and connect that to the prophetic writings of a foreign religion. Ambassadors from another empire arrive in Jerusalem asking about a new king. Does Herod have a flash that maybe his reign is finite? The chief priests and the scribes review the prophet's writing and all of a sudden realize that Bethlehem, their name, is where the Messiah is to be born. Herod lies to the Magi to find out about Jesus' whereabouts. Was that a false epiphany about how to rid himself of a possible usurper? The Holy Family gives audience to the Gentile Magi and suddenly realize how much their child might change the entire world. The Magi have a dream about Herod. Is that an epiphany? So I'm going to ask you to think about this story this week and try to remember epiphanies in your life. Maybe you've had a discovery about something that made your work easier. Or maybe you suddenly understood some person who has vexed you for a long time. Or maybe there was something about scripture or some theological understanding that some suddenly came to you. Then ask yourself, did this epiphany really come from within me? Or is this an epiphany from God that maybe you need to listen to? Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year.
that the leaders of our nation and every nation may grow in their zeal to defeat hunger, poverty, and attacks on human life, especially against the unborn. We pray to the Lord. That our parish may prosper in this new year with renewed zeal in all its members to share our God-given gifts to help spread love and faith in Christ, especially through this year's Catholic Ministries Appeal. We pray to the Lord. That more people may embrace the call to become priests, deacons, religious and lay ministers, to minister in our diocese and worldwide. We pray to the Lord. <coughs> that those who are ill may receive God's healing and peace, especially Florence Pavlina, Mary Ellen Mitchell, and Christian Waite and Phil Simeo, our two special intentions, as well as those mentioned in our bulletin and in our prayer book of requests. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That all the deceased may rest in heavenly peace, especially Betsy McDermott, Russell Morin, and all of our deceased relatives and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For any prayers you now lift up in silence. For those intentions, we pray to the Lord. God, great in love, you call us to follow your Son, Jesus, the light of the world. Strengthen us to share more readily your light of love with others. Grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our hymn for presentation. Number 434, sing out the Number 434.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as the light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And bless our first call to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may proceed with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a very urgent and serious announcement to make this morning. I hope that you will take a copy of the bulletin home in it. You will find a bulletin insert about a bill that is being proposed by state government officials to expand abortion throughout the state for just about any reason whatsoever. A careless disregard for life in general, in my view, and certainly in the church's view. So I hope that you'll look at the flyer and follow these simple instructions. It will not take too long to let our legislators know that we need to protect life at all costs, because this bill could be devastating to countless women and children, not to mention families and society as a whole. So this is truly, literally, a matter of life and death. So please do your part and continue to pray for its defeat. On a happier note, I'd like to say that we, for the fifth year in a row at St. Mary's, joined St. Benedict's in reaching our Catholic Ministries Appeal Goal. <laughs> this past Friday, we hit 101.92% with more pledges than we've ever had before in one year, $40,357. The goal was $39,598, so that is just awesome. And St. Ben's is still riding high at number one on the highest percentage list for all parishes in the diocese at a whopping 138% of its goal with $7,550. You guys are miraculous. So Thank you so much. Now, one other thing. You remember my challenge that we can get 70 people from St. Mary's to pledge 200 or more. I kick in an extra 2,000. We only need two more people to do that. So if we, if you have not pledged yet, please grab an envelope and empty my wallet, please, for the new year. It's not going to take too much to do that. Finally, we have a volunteer luncheon happening in the gym at the parish center right after this Mass. If you have volunteered in our parish in any capacity in the past year, we'd like to invite you to join us for a special lunch in your honor. It's the least we can do to say thank you for helping keeping our community vibrant. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. 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 And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light of the light, who is Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. A very peaceful week, everybody. Please join us in singing number 424, Heart of the Herald, Angels Sing, number 424.